Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this NEC Alumni Update, part of our Connect series. For more information on Connect, you can visit northeastconference.org. Well, I'm Ralph Ventry, and I'm pretty excited to have a special guest in the front row studio today, the inaugural NEC Male Student Athlete of the Year back in 2015, former Wagner football letter winner, Phil Facone. Phil was a two-time All-American long snapper for the Seahawks, and along with the athletic resume, the academic resume, and the great deal of service he did during his years at Wagner, it earned him the highest overall honor a men's student athlete can get here in the Northeast Conference. So with that said, Phil, it's great to have you here Good up in that. Central New Jersey. You know, it was two years ago down in Red Bank, you received the prestigious honor Student Athlete of the Year Award. And two years later, you're set to embark on a really exciting journey, which we'll talk about uh, in a few. But please just catch us up as to where you've been, what you've done these past two years since we last saw you down at the Molly Pitcher Inn in Red Bank. Good old Molly Pitcher. Not too far from my house, actually, right down in Brick. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a fun two years. I do miss my time at Wagner. I do. I, I go up there often for a lot of the games. Still a season ticket holder, still part of the touchdown club. Do they give you a discount on that at least or what? I don't know. I talked to my mom about that. She still pays for those for me, so I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> not working full, full time yet. Um, but yeah, so I've been, you know, very active working with Wagner and Coach Haas especially. Been doing a lot of community stuff up there, trying to get them involved still with other different parts of the community, stuff I didn't get the chance to work with. Uh, I've got them hooked up with some uh, youth group stuff and everything too, which is great. Um, but things have been going well. I ended up going to Monmouth University, right in uh, West Long Branch for my master's degree, which I actually finished up this week. Um, got it in home, uh, Homeland Security, did it in a quick two years. Um, yeah, things have been going well, just keeping busy. Uh, still doing some stuff with the local churches in my town to get things going. I brought one of the programs down from Wagner that I learned about there, which is Operation Christmas Child. So I got things started going there a little bit, you know, getting boxes of toys for kids around Christmas time, getting them shipped around the world. Just getting back to Wagner for a second, um, what activities did you do there in terms of community service while you were a student? And now, um, what are you doing now? I know you were very involved with the bone marrow drive they had uh, and a number of other initiatives that the Wagner Student Athletic, uh, Student Athlete Advisory Committee had spearheaded. Um, just give us a little recap of some of your top service initiatives and accomplishments at Wagner and then also kind of what you've been doing when you've been visiting there uh, periodically over the last couple of years. Right, so um, the, the few of the things I want to highlight that I was, when I was there was one of them, Operation Christmas Child, like I said, we did that with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and we got uh, Student Athlete Advisory Committee involved later on once we've rebuilt it at Wagner, so we got a lot of people involved with that. What, what, did, what does that organization do now? So it's through Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse gives us uh, these, you know, shoe boxes and we fill them with necessities almost and you know small toys little trinkets and they get sent around the world to kids who have never had a christmas before or, or places that have been you know utterly destroyed like even um a few years ago when colorado had a lot of issues with uh with water i think even we've sent them to flint before too uh anybody that's struggling around the world especially in the united states will send them these christmas gifts and just lets them know some hey someone's thinking about you you know, it, it's, it's really great. Sure, so you had the, the Christmas Child Initiative and um, what We else? did the bone marrow drive every year. Um, actually, every year we did it. So you can only sign up once in your life or in a certain amount of years, maybe 10 years. So when, you know, you go to a small school like Wagner, you can really only pinpoint, you know, maybe the freshman class and a few transfers. So we got people from the community to always come. We really pinpointed the freshman classes. We looked for transfers that may have never done it before or people who may have shied away from it for the, the years prior. And believe it or not, every year we did it, we went up in numbers. So I know they're still growing in numbers, too. I know they do a lot of community outreach up there, too, still. So I know uh, Jesse Flaherty, who's still there, he took over a lot of the community service stuff that I was doing, and he's been doing an excellent job from what Coach Haas is telling me. And 
Um, anything else at Wagner that, that you have fond memories of there? Uh, fond memory, well, we did the March of Dimes uh, walk too. We did a lot of fundraising and um, did a lot of assemblies with the kids in uh, the elementary schools to get them, you know, to talk to their families about donating money to the March of Dimes, things like that. So it was cool to actually get to talk to kids because when you're younger, you remember those assemblies when you're in the auditorium, everyone's around, and then all of a sudden you're in college and you're the one doing the assembly, which was awesome. We've been talking a lot about service to the community, um, and now your next adventure also has to deal with service. Um, you are on the cusp of joining the United States Marine Corps, and first of all, just a brief description of the program you are going to undertake, and also uh, what led to this career choice. When did you decide I want to serve in the military, and uh, when did you begin to pursue um, this uh, great challenge? Really, right. So I'll start with that, like why, why I wanted to pursue this. So I was about a month into my master's degree. And I said to myself, you know, what do I really want to do? Um, I was looking at going into a police force, going into the federal government. I was getting the master's in Homeland Security. That all could line up perfectly for me. But then I said to myself, I just, I want to do something even more. You know, I feel like, I, I feel like right now I'm just not doing anything important like I was doing at Wagner. I was doing so much with everybody. We're all working together, even like with the football team, being a team and, just, you know, going out every day and just working together towards a common goal. You know, towards, of course, the, the biggest common goals we could ever have. That's right. A two-time <laughs> Northeast Conference champion as well. Wagner Seahawks in 2012 and then again in 2014. So, um, yeah, the, 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 the bling, they, they, they speak for themselves. So, <laughs> but, uh, but it was nice, you know, to always have that. And so I ended up having a conversation with my uncle, who was 24 years enlisted. He's actually my mom's cousin, but, you know, the way things work in the family, I'll sure, call him sure, my uncle. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, like I said, 24 years enlisted as a Marine one of the most stand-up guys you could ever meet. And he, he said to me, if you want, look into military. She said, military service is probably the best thing I could have ever done. And he goes, you don't have to enlist. You can be go officer route. I said, okay. So I'm looking at all, different, all the different branches. I said, you know what? Let me look towards the Marine Corps. Found a way to reach out to the uh, officer selection office, which is in New Brunswick, right on Rutgers campus, and ended up meeting uh, the captain there, and then gunnery sergeant, now master sergeant, who actually was recruited by my uncle, which is such a small world. And they started, to, you know, they interviewed me, everything went well, and they started to put together a packet. Now the packet took over a year to put together. They needed transcripts from Wagner, they needed transcripts from Monmouth, they needed uh, all my community service records, they needed, you know, background check paperwork, everything. So I needed a medical review. So once all that was put together in the packet, and I said, okay, we could send this through, uh, I got submitted to the you know main selection board, and there are hundreds, maybe a thousand uh, applications every single board, and they pick the top ones they think will do very well at officer candidate school. You can do that while you're in school. You can do that um, actually while you're enlisted. They usually send you for a bachelor's degree. But if you're at a school, you have if you have a bachelor's degree, you can you can simply apply and put together a packet. And they also look at your physical fitness scores, everything, because they do fitness tests. It's it's all, it's, they're looking for the most well-rounded people they can find. So, and of course, if you have strengths, you can have weaknesses. They'll, they'll start to, you know, give and take a little bit, but they try to look for the most well-rounded people. And once you're selected, you get your orders to report. So my orders to report are this year, June 3rd, to Quantico, Virginia, which is Officer Candidate School. That takes about 10 weeks uh, to pass fail. You know, they do drop people for academics, integrity, things like that, because you do go to school while you're in there. Um, physical fitness, but you know, I'm very optimistic and I know that I've been, you know, busting my tail. Um, I've done a lot of marine history, you know, reading. I've done a lot of the other paperwork. I've, I've taken prep classes with uh, the captain and the master sergeant. So I know I'm well prepared going into this. And now this is a 10 week program. Uh, after the completion of that, and of course, we'll think positively uh, after you pass this 10 week course. What's the next step in, in the process? So at that time, once you pass, there's a graduation day. Um, you're usually in your, uh, your, you know, usually your woodland camouflage. Family comes through. It's great. And then if you're going to be commissioning, say you graduated college already, some kids go back another year to college, and then once they graduate, they're officially commissioned. Me, I'll, I'm already done with school. So I'll commission that day, too. I'll go back, I'll put my class A's on, and I'll go to a pinning ceremony where my parents will put my second lieutenant bars on my collar. 
and I'll get my first salute as well. So it's, well, that could all happen on August 12th. Wow. That's the, that's the graduation day. A short time away, but a lot mm -hmm. is going to happen between now and then. So um, we'll look forward uh, to catching up with you, hopefully down the road, and you'll have some good news to report there. Um, I want to take some time now to remember a little bit about Wagner College, Wagner football, the Northeast Conference, and I'll start by asking, what was it about Wagner that made it so enjoyable for you? It's a family, and uh, you know, it's, it's a little cliche to say that, but I'll tell you right now, I can still walk in there any day of the week and you know, Coach Haas will give me a big hug. Coach Cuss will give me a huge hug. Coach Wheeler, it's, it's so great to see so many coaches still stay back. Coach Siasi, he left for a little bit sure. and came back, even after playing at Wagner, you know. It, it's a family. You know, I know a lot of guys that are still there playing. Uh, luckily, guys I played with, one of them now is done, but now he's a Raider, Najee Harris. Sure, Love sure. seeing that for that kid. He's such a hard worker. Um, that's the one thing we'll always have in common, you know. Uh, we went about a year ago. Uh, one of our old quarterbacks, Kramer Berg, it was his wedding. You know, there's a bunch of us at his wedding, and we're joking, we're laughing, we're having a great time, we're talking about our time at Wagner, because we're all graduated by then. Sure. But it always comes back to the bond we had. It, the, that football program, that whole athletics program, everybody at that school, it's such a small school of just under 2,000 people, it's a family. And you know everybody, everybody knows you, and everyone gets along. And that's what's so great about that school. Now, as far as the football, the physical demands of the football, and also, the whole concept of being a part of a team. You had mentioned working toward a common goal. Did you see these parallels between your time at Wagner football and the opportunity in the Marines? Is, is that really kind of what attracted you to the Marines? So that's what drew me to it, 100%. You know, like working towards the goal, especially the physical aspect of things. You know, everyone's always pushing each other to get better, no matter what. It's like being on a football team again. You know, and it's great. That's what I love about it. And everyone's always pushing each other to get better. You want to be a better version of yourself every day. And we know the accomplishments were plentiful during your uh, playing career with the, the two championship rings, the All-America selections as a long snapper. Um, but whether it was in athletics, academics, out in the community, what was your, if you had to point to one thing, and it's probably hard to do, but if you had to point to one thing, what was your most rewarding experience from Wagner? What was your most rewarding moment of, of those four years there? Most rewarding moment? I kind of have two. Sure. Because one was more of a fun moment, and one was more of a, like a big, like, you know, it just relief that, you know, the, so the first one, my sophomore year when David Lopez hit that big field goal against Central Connecticut, uh, that's what started our big win streak that year. But I, there's something about that moment. I'll always think back to that, no matter what. Central I Connecticut, right? Friday night game. It's raining. It's cold. Wagner kind of had a sloppy first half. And uh, that allowed them, obviously, to get a little momentum going into halftime. They win the game, and then they rattle off, I think, nine consecutive victories, um, including a FCS playoff win over Colgate. You also beat Patriot League member Holy Cross in the regular season finale. You took the run all the way out to Eastern Washington on the red turf, that hideous red turf. And uh, yeah, it was such a fun game to watch. Obviously, the Seahawks came up a little short, so it, it was that moment, that, that field goal kind of maybe not only jump, jump started the team, but it definitely jump started you, huh? That's a moment that you'll go back to almost like a, a defining moment for what could arguably be the greatest season in Northeast Conference history, you know? And yeah, I, I, to make it more personal for me, it was big for me. That was my first year as a starter. You know, I was a sophomore then. You know, I was 19 years old and I, you know, young kid, I, I, that field goal, like, it always comes back to the coach's mind, the player's mind. Everyone thinks back to that field goal, and to think I was on the field to be part of that. You were snapping the ball, I assume. Amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It, was a, it was a fantastic moment. I'll never forget. Coach, coach Fullen came up to me, gave me a huge hug, 
and we were going right into the locker room for halftime. And right after, and we came back out, we took care of business, and it just kept rolling after that. So even with Hurricane Sandy, they, everything just kept rolling. So, yeah, and even in Hurricane Sandy, I know that um, the Wagner players obviously took some time out of their schedules and gave it to the local community. Wagner being up on a hill in Staten Island, Grimes Hill, of course, really wasn't devastated by the effects of the hurricanes, but down on the shore, down in the lower elevations in Staten Island, obviously communities were devastated. Um, you know, there were even some bodies uh, floating in, in, in the water per se. And uh, I always found it just remarkable, quite admirable that um, this happened obviously the end of October and November when the team is in its stretch run competing for a championship, um, but yet the group took some time out and was trying to help clean up and salvage and just, um, you know, lend some sort of comfort to, to the local community at Staten Island. Uh, what do you remember about that? I just, I remember we didn't have any power. I know that. Um, as soon as the bridge is open from New Jersey, uh, to, from anywhere to get back to the island, uh, coach said, if you can come back, come back. We're going to try and have practice. Didn't have enough guys, and by the time everyone did get back, it was late. So, of course, no power, no lights, couldn't do anything on practice field. So we had practice the next morning. Uh, we used as much daylight as we could. Of course, we had no class. Uh, couldn't do anything for about a week and a half up there. So, you know, what we did was we got all the vans, filled as many players as we could, and we were making runs down to the South Shore and, you know, just doing what we could. And I'll tell you, it's, it was a war zone. But the Staten Island community, there's some tough people, man. They are some tough people, and they... They love their Staten Islanders. They, they love each other. It's, it's such a strong community on that island. And they did everything they could to help each other out. People who weren't impacted already down there helping out. Red Cross, to, you know, bringing all the supplies over. You know, I think there was a National Guard there that hand things out too. We're in the back of pickup trucks dropping sandwiches off to people that were hot and ready, just giving them out, uh, dropping water off. We were doing some, we were ripping some, uh, some houses apart, putting some, putting some walls up back together once once the storm of course passed and everything it was months later but we're still we were in those houses months after sandy and th that's that on community they're, they're strong people man they yeah really i know you had uh, a few native staten islanders on that team as well of course headlined by nikki dosher the quarterback um so obviously with the with the the local draw there you know it, it definitely um it, it was a special moment to witness quite honestly. You did say, though, you had two rewarding experiences or most rewarding experiences. Um, what's that second one? When we're at Bryant for that 2014 championship, uh, they threw up a, we had taken a late lead. They threw up a pass with no time left on the clock. It got batted down and we stormed the field. That right there, just because that was my, I knew for a fact that's my last game ever in college, ever. I knew that for a fact. That was, you know, you made it to the conference championship game, and you won. That right there, it's just a big. We did it, you know, and we did it twice. You know, it's the second time that senior class had won the championship, and it was truly remarkable. And just I didn't know what to do. I was looking for everybody to hug. We all hugging each other. My dad, my parents came down on the field, gave my dad a huge hug, who him especially has been one of the biggest supporters, like with football. Of course, my mom has too, but my dad was my coach when I was a kid. And we never dealt with each other on the field. You know, we always knew to stay away from each other, but he was always there to help out the team. And to see that long run of 12 years of playing football come to an end at that moment, it just was a big sigh of relief because, like, we did it, I mean, you know quite an incredible way to end a career and obviously you left out a couple details that to me amplify the magnitude of that victory uh, first of all Duquesne had already locked up at least a tie of uh, first place in the Northeast Conference right. and they were going to clinch the automatic bid um, but we do recognize co-champions now Bryant and Wagner are playing in the finale, and essentially the winner was going to tie Duquesne for the co-title. And Bryant in particular that year, if you remember non-conference, they had some outstanding wins. And 
they were on the bubble for a possible at-large berth into the FCS playoffs. And they were home. And all they had to do was take care of the Seahawks in the regular season finale. And they would have their first ever NEC title and possibly be in prime position for an FCS at-large berth. And I remember distinctly, Wagner was kind of in control the whole game. But Bryant took a late lead on a hook and ladder play. It was a wild hook and ladder touchdown. Bryant takes the last lead. Then Wagner comes back. The two-minute drill drives all the way down, punches it in the end zone for the go-ahead score. And then, as you mentioned, Bryant with a couple more desperation last-minute attempts. And that's when you guys storm the field and... Wow, you, you left the champion. So I, I could only imagine how that felt. You know, not too many Northeast Conference athletes get to end their career on such a high note. In terms of football, you mentioned 12-year playing career, the culmination at Wagner. What exactly about Wagner football, or even the sport of football, what can you say it has done for your life and what will stay with you, if anything, throughout your life? Is there anything that you took away from Wagner football that just kind of will stick with you? And what has it meant for Phil Facone? It taught me to never be complacent. You know, anything, anything can change any day of the week. Uh, Coach Hamline, you know, drilled that into us because competing was always the biggest thing. If you're competing for a spot, there's never going to be a day where you're going you're gonna to let up off the gas. Um, because, not, like I said, nothing is guaranteed any day of the week. Uh, like it, taught me, it taught me camaraderie. It taught me brotherhood. You know, Those guys are my brothers forever, hands down, no matter what. Uh, I could see them any, anywhere. You know, um, I was just talking to Brian Melly the other day. We him and I had a you know, texting conversation back and forth. I hadn't talked to Brian in a while, and it was just nice to talk to him. I'm probably hopefully going to see A.J. Firestone soon, you know, especially the special teams unit. I'm so close to those yeah. guys. Those are, those are my guys. Um, you know, I talked to Coach Hamline often. I saw him uh, at the spring game two weeks ago. And it's like, you know, we picked up right where we left off a few months ago. I hadn't seen him since then, but we picked up right where we left off. Um, things are just, things are special at that program. Things are special on the island. You know, I was talking to Tatum Kolitz, who's now, who took over for Peg as one of the Senior ADs. Senior women's yep. administrator, yes. She, I was talking to her the other day at the spring game as well. And I said, oh, they got you back here. She goes, no, we never leave. I said, nope, you never do. And even if you actually did physically leave, the party is always going to be there. And when you go back, nothing, nothing's going to change. And when you saw Coach Hamline and he found out you were going into the Marines, did he tell you to train like the Dickens? Or? Mm -hmm. Always does. Train like the Dickens. Train like the Dickens, that's it. <laughs> um, I think it's appropriate to end on this note here. If you had any advice for a future Northeast Conference student athlete, uh, what would it be? And what does being a Northeast Conference student athlete mean to you? Some advice would be to make sure, get your academics done. That's one of the most important things. You're, in, you're a student first, then an athlete. That's why it's student athlete. Uh, get involved. Don't just sit around. If you have some free time, go talk to the student athlete advisor committee. Go, you know, go get involved in clubs on campus. Go see if you can, you know, if your grades are high enough, go try and join the Honor Society for your uh, respective major. You know, try and get involved as much as you can because it will only benefit you down the road. Being a Northeast Conference student athlete, you know, it's not just winning championships. It's not just getting to do cool interviews at Ralph two years after you've graduated and getting to get, get to take a look around the awesome studio here. Uh, it, it's about being a family. It's a, it's a small conference that's growing and it will continue to grow. And it, they grow because of people like Ralph. And they grow because they, they helped us. Ralph helped me. He put my name in to get voted to become an All-American, and it worked. Thanks. Awesome. I <laughs> never expected that in a million years. You're giving me too much credit here, Phil, but <laughs> I didn't pay him to say any of this, by the way. But um, it, I hope the commissioner is listening right now, too, Phil. Her ear might be on the door right now. Uh, <laughs> But um, just, it's a family and treat it as such because there's a bunch of great people in this conference. Make sure you stay involved, stay in touch with all of them throughout your time at your school and throughout the time afterwards because they will help you in every way possible.
Well, you've heard from Phil Facone, two-time All-American long snapper, 2015 Northeast Conference Men's Student Athlete of the Year. And we are hoping for him that he will soon be a United States Marine. It was great catching up with you, Phil. Thanks for coming into the Front Row Studios. And thank you for watching this NEC Alumni Update, part of our Connect series.